Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Taking Michigan's pulse, a new poll giving an exclusive look at which way voters here are leaning in the race for president. And President Trump emerges from hospitalization, returning to the White House and delivering a video message about COVID that sparked immediate controversy. That coming up, but we begin here at 11 with the most tragic type of breaking news, the death of a child in a car crash. That crash involving two large SUVs on the city's west side. A boy was ejected from one of the vehicles and died. A woman and three other children were rushed to the hospital. Tim Pamplin on the scene with the night cam. We're on Detroit's west side. Joy and Stahel and Joy Southfield. You see the white the Yukon Denali there rolled over. Uh, a mother and uh, her child and his three friends are inside that vehicle. Four young children, all under the age of 10. We're heading eastbound here. Police say the female driver ran the red light here and was hit by another vehicle that was northbound. That vehicle came to a stop up here. That collision caused the white Yukon to start rolling down Joy Road with four young children in the back. One of the children was ejected and did succumb to, to his injuries. A clearly shaken Commander Williams there from Detroit's 6th Precinct overseeing the investigation here. He tells me the driver was the mother to one of the children inside. Police do have to notify the parents of the young six-year-old that died. But Commander echoing what we've been hearing, traffic fatalities are way up. It's sad. He had a loss of life of a child. It should never happen. That is the scene along Joy Road tonight with a night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, Tim, let's turn now to President Trump and his return to the White House after hospitalization for COVID-19. In the span of just a couple of hours, the president left Walter Reed Medical Center, paused for a photo op on the White House balcony, and released a message echoing his tweet earlier in the day, telling people not to be afraid of COVID. Alice, Alice Barr in Washington with the latest. The world's most watched COVID patient tonight walking out of Walter Reed Medical Center and minutes later arriving back at the White House, taking off his mask for a star spangled photo op, downplaying serious concerns about his recovery and about the virus itself. And now I'm better and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. But don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there. Be careful. We have the best medicines in the world. But the doctors who will continue to treat the president say he will still need careful monitoring. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, the team and I agree that all our evaluations, and most importantly, his clinical status, support the president's safe return home. Doctors saying he continues to improve after a delayed acknowledgement that his oxygen levels had dropped twice in recent days and that he's now taking a steroid typically only recommended for seriously ill patients in the hospital. At the same time, questions remain about the scope of the outbreak inside the White House. Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany and two top assistants today joining the list of several high-level staffers testing positive. And now concerns that the president's return puts even more White House workers at risk. I mean, here's a person who has active COVID, who is infectious with a disease that is transmitted by aerosol, who is allowing people to come that close to him. Tonight, a show of strength from a president facing scrutiny for both the messages he's sending about COVID-19 and the ones he isn't. Though President Trump says that he wants to get back on the campaign trail soon, his doctor said today his viral load needs to get knocked down so that he's not spreading the virus to other people. In some cases, that can take up to 10 days. From Walter Reed Medical Center, Alice Barr, NBC News. All right, Alice, exclusive new poll numbers tonight now showing how Michigan voters are feeling about the presidential race. And there's a bit of a change in those numbers from our last poll, which was in September. It is important to note, though, this live poll was conducted after the first presidential debate, but before the president's COVID diagnosis. Mara McDonald is live with the results. Uh, Mara, Joe Biden appears to be extending his lead here in Michigan. Kimberly, that's right. You know, in our last poll in September, it was Biden plus five over Trump. That's right outside the margin of error. This time around, Joe Biden is adding to his lead. Let me show you everything. Exclusive new poll numbers show Biden has expanded his lead by three. He's now up eight points here in Michigan over the president. And that shift is coming from a specific section of voters, according to our pollster. The biggest shift of all came amongst white senior citizens in Michigan. 
uh, they, is, they are now disproportionately moving against Donald Trump to almost a 30-point margin in Joe Biden's favor. And the issue that's driving it is the president's response to COVID. Now, remember, this poll was done before the president was diagnosed with COVID. COVID is the central point. It is the fulcrum point of this election. And Donald Trump is going to either win re-election or lose based on perceptions of how he handled COVID. This poll was done after the first debate between the president and former Vice President Biden. And according to those they polled, they watched it. But look at this next number and look closely. The greatest number here didn't think either won that debate. Zuba thinks with the vast increase in absentee ballot requests, this election isn't going to be decided on November 3rd. The election is happening as we speak right now today with you know, millions of people in Michigan with absentee ballots in their hands already. Back here live, something to always remember when we get new polling results. A poll is only a snapshot in time. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. So right, Mara. All right, the race for president's just part of the poll results. Tomorrow morning on Local 4 News Today, some of the biggest issues at stake in the election. What do Michiganders think about the Supreme Court vacancy left by Ruth Bader Ginsburg and when it should be filled? Also, do Michiganders support overturning the Affordable Care Act or leaving it in place? And how important to voters is the protection of pre-existing conditions when it comes to medical insurance? You'll see that portion of the poll results starting at 6 a.m. on Local 4 News today. Bernie Sanders made an appearance at the University of Michigan and Macomb Community College today in an attempt to rally his supporters to vote for Biden. The rallies were held in a drive-in style on each campus to ensure safety and social distancing. We asked Senator Sanders if he was concerned about the safety of Biden and President Trump participating in any more debates. Well, I think there is concern. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, that's a decision that, you know, the president and, and Joe Biden will have to make. Uh, but I think the president's illness just puts into very sharp focus the kind of crisis that we're dealing with. It can impact anybody, you or me or anybody, you know, truck driver or somebody who's working in a grocery store, anybody. If it impacts the president, it can impact anybody. By the way, we've learned Wednesday's vice presidential debate will feature 12 feet of social distancing along with plastic partitions to protect Mike Pence and Kamala Harris. There's a change coming in our weather and some trouble down south with Hurricane Delta. Yeah, well, let's get over to Ben for the latest. Hi, Ben. Yeah, watching both of those stories, guys, and it's hard to believe, even though today's beautiful, this was probably the coldest day that we're going to go through here in the next 10. It all gets warmer from here starting tomorrow, and we'll take a look at the satellite picture. There is not a lot to look at except that little batch of rain that you see up there in the UP and Lake Superior. It's going to drag itself down a little bit further, so tomorrow night about this time going into Wednesday morning, there's a slight chance you could see a couple sprinkles up there in the thumb in the far northern sections of the north zone. Otherwise, if you don't see that, that's it for the rain until the middle of next week. Temperatures on their way to the upper 60s. That's above average and starts a stretch of six of the next seven days where we'll be unseasonably mild. We'll look at how warm things get and a gorgeous weekend ahead, plus the latest on Delta. All in a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, take a look now at the Sunday and Monday totals of new coronavirus cases in the state. 1,407 new positive tests, which averages out to 703 cases per day. Also, 15 new deaths have been reported. The list of COVID outbreaks in Michigan schools is also growing. Statewide, 24 new schools were added to the list of schools with two or more cases of COVID-19. That includes Holy Redeemer in Detroit. They've seen 11 new cases in the past week. That brings the total number of cases in Michigan schools and colleges to 4,063. Michigan State University accounts for more than a quarter of that total. They've had 1,420 cases. Governor Whitmer says masks and limits on gatherings are still the rule despite Friday state Supreme Court rule invalidating the emergency powers law she has invoked so often when putting those safety restrictions in place. But I won't let partisan politics get in the way of doing what's necessary to keep people safe and save lives. 
to protect our most vulnerable residents and frontline workers, the Department of Health and Human Services will issue epidemic orders to maintain our statewide mask mandate and limitations on gatherings. DHS order not sitting well with Republicans in the legislature. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky put out a statement tonight saying in part, the threat of COVID is real. The best way to help keep our citizens safe and our state productive is for the legislature and the governor to work together to forge a path forward. The Supreme Court intends for us to work together. It's too bad Governor Whitmer isn't listening. A woman is in the hospital with serious injuries after a sandbag was thrown through her windshield from an overpass along I-96. I'm on the freeway 96. Someone just pulled, threw a rock over an overpass and it went through my windshield and hit me in the head. It happened last night near Old Plank Road in Lyon Township. Take a look at the damage caused by the 40 pound sandbag that struck right in the center of her windshield. A 41 year old man is responsible for throwing that sandbag after crashing his truck. Police say he walked up the overpass and started throwing sandbags at the cars below. Could have been a lot worse. She was pretty lucky that she wasn't killed in this incident. Yeah, well, the man was picked up by another driver and told him what he had done, uh, but there's still no indication of why he did it. A national home improvement chain trying to save Halloween. Ahead, their COVID safe trick or treating plan that includes making it two nights instead of one. And here's Jason. A month after a neighborhood meeting over noise complaints here at the corner ballpark in Corktown, complaints are still coming in. Tonight we talked to the CEO of PAL and hear from Detroit police to find out if this neighborhood can be harmonious.